Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm anxious to get back with Tony and talk to you about the uh, cattle market. So let's see what the prices are doing real quick. Over my shoulder here, I can see December is up a nickel at 170.07. Got the Feb contract down 67 at 169.62. April down 52, 173.30. June down 30, 171 even. Our feeder cattle market had been a little firmer this morning and now a little bit softer. I got Jan feeders down 50 at 223.55. I got March down 50 at 225.25. April contract down 52 at 230 even. Take a look at our hog market this morning and see what it's doing. Um, a little bit mixed. I've got the Feb contract of 50 at 70.72. The April contract of 25 at 77.17. And now to the June contract, it's down a nickel at 92.20. I'd like to invite my guest, Tony St. James, back in. He is with All Ag All Day. And Tony, earlier we were talking about some issues in the cattle market. Tell us what you were, uh, what we were discussing earlier. Well, uh, first off, uh, a couple of, of quick notes here. I uh, read something uh, that came out, I believe, yesterday talking about the Mexican cattle herd is expected to start rebuilding as uh, they start picking up more, uh, more moisture from the El Nino. Uh, one other thing that we don't talk about a whole lot is the fever tick situation. This is in South Texas. Uh, looking Cameron, Willacy, Kennedy counties, uh, 2,600 premises are quarantined at this point. Uh, and it's no threat to humans, but whenever we get that, that fever tick, uh, the death rate for cattle is about 90%. So uh, definitely something we want to keep an eye on, though numbers have been slowly coming down. I want to switch over real quick to uh, whether or not, I think uh, you asked me yesterday, are we starting to rebuild the herd yet? And I wanted to wait till I had some good numbers for you, but there are nearly every feedlot in the Texas panhandle right now have have the beef on dairy crosses, if you will. These are going to be the Charlay, these uh, the Angus crossed with the the Jersey or the Holsteins. And what they're doing is they're moving those into the feedlots now. We actually, I know of two feedlots that are running about 80% of their capacity right now with these crosses. So what does that mean for us? I, I don't know that it's going to show up uh, on our cattle numbers, but it's definitely giving a, a, a good uh, hit for these these feeders who have been watching their numbers dwindle over the last couple of years. So this is a is a pretty important lifeline for quite a few feeders. Well, it is. And I'll tell you, Tony, interesting that you mentioned that because we know that feeding capacity has not contracted in multiple years. Uh, we know that the packing capacity has, and that's what made them a very lean and profitable industry now. But we haven't ever seen the cattle, in, uh, cattle feeding sector do that. Are you kind of concerned that that might be taking place in the future? I, you know, at this point, I don't think so, at least in the the high plains of Texas, because obviously a large feeding industry here, but now it's a growing dairy industry as well. Huge uh, uh, cheese plant going into the Lubbock area on the east side of Lubbock in, well, they're building it right now. We're hearing of dairy expansions north of Amarillo, more dairies moving in from California. And I think with that, it's just going to provide more opportunities for another supply of cattle for those feeders. Fantastic. That is really good news. We certainly do appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning, Tony. It is Tony St. James. He is with All Ag All Day. And so that's really good information to kind of know that the a lot. cattle feeding industry is going to be very shy of beef cattle and to kind of know that the, the, dairies uh, are coming in. the dairies are going to come in and help them out a little bit. Oh, thank so. you, Chris. Thank you, Tony.